Now we'll come to border molding and final impression. Very quickly, I'll speak about uh, a little theory. What are the objectives of impression making? All of us know preservation, support, stability, aesthetics, and retention. So preservation is mainly because of pressure. The ridges are going to resolve if we apply a lot of pressure through our dentures in areas where we are not supposed to apply pressure, the resorption will increase. So we don't want to do that. We want to preserve the tissues. Support is we want maximum coverage of the denture stability there has to be close adaptation so your impressions have to be very accurate aesthetics the border thickness will determine the aesthetics of the patient how full the lips are or how full the cheeks are therefore when you are doing your border molding and final impression the thickness of the border is quite important over there ensure that you are checking the thickness of the border in terms of aesthetics also and of course there are a lot of features in retention out of which atmospheric pressure adhesion cohesion are most important which are the impression techniques there are a lot of classifications open mouth closed mouth primary secondary using stock tray using custom tray all that most commonly used is mucocompressive mucostatic and selective pressure mucocompressive and mucostatic are very self self explanatory in mucocompressive while making the impression we are going to compress the mucosa completely in mucostatic we are going to ensure that all the mucosa is completely relaxed none of the mucosa is compressed both these techniques have their own advantages and disadvantages which you can read in the theory what we usually follow is the selective pressure technique so the selective pressure technique is based on the philosophy that there are some areas which if we compress they are not going to resolve whereas there are some areas if we compress they are going to start resolving immediately or not only resolve they are going to have some other problems like for example in the pebble so we find out which are the areas which we can compress and we find out which are the areas which we cannot compress and apply the pressure selectively in areas which we can compress this would ensure that there is maximum retention also and least trauma to the tissues that is the idea of a selective pressure technique okay so this selective pressure technique is usually done with the help of different types of uh, designs of custom trays you can follow either of these designs whatever is followed in your college okay Uh, the concept is these spacers. This is an I spacer. This is a T spacer. You can give a full spacer. You can give a double spacer. That is a full spacer with an I or a T spacer. This I, T, or double spacers they make space for the impression material. The more the space, the less pressure there is going to be on the tissues. So suppose in this uh, uh, second picture, there is a spacer only in the I or in the incisive papilla and the mid palate and rapid region. and there is no spacer anywhere else that means there is more space in this region for the impression material therefore there will be much less pressure in this region than there would be in the rest of the region so you just have to know what is the philosophy similarly for the mandibular the buccal shelf area is cut back buccal shelf area is the primary stress bearing area or the sometimes there is this design also so you follow the design of your institution that is okay you should just be able to ensure that you know which impression technique you are following and how is your spacer design and the custom tray design ensuring that uh, uh, you are uh, 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 delivering selective pressure technique okay so these are the final customized trays this is how they should be ready there is something called as this tissue stops i would just uh, try to explain what these tissue stops are usually we say that our impression material is going to require around 1 to 1.5 mm of space while making impression so using this spacer modeling wax we have kept the modeling wax thickness of around 1 to 1.5 mm so that there is sufficient space for the impression material properly all around evenly but when we are going to make the impression we are going to remove the spacer wax once we remove the spacer wax if there are no tissue stops anywhere then when we are placing the impression in the patient's mouth with the impression material the train the patient's mouth in the uh, with the impression material if let's say i put a lot of pressure in the anterior region then this tray because the mucosa is compressible the tray is going to push in the anterior region and posteriorly there won't be sufficient uh, pressure so 1.5 mm equally which i had kept would not remain therefore we keep this tissue stop so that once we remove the uh spacer wax when i place the tray in the patient's mouth with the impression material i may try to press excessively either in the anteriorly or in the posterior region these tissue stops would ensure that 
at any given point of time this tissue stops are in contact with the tissues and however much i press the space would be equal all around that is why we give this tissue stops this is important this is usually asked in your exams why have you given this tissue stops okay then there is these handle designs please ensure that uh, for the maxillary it is around 45 degrees for the mandibular it is nearly straight or slightly protruded this is depending on the our uh, teeth arrangement or the uh, position of the teeth maxillary and the mandibular so that we don't interfere with the border molding so before we start with our border molding quickly see whether you are seating the patient correctly whenever we seat the patient the patient's head should be well supported always ensure that don't cause any discomfort to the patient whenever we are doing maxillary border molding or maxillary impression you should be standing behind the patient not in front of the patient if you see over here you are standing behind the patient your position should be 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock behind the patient not in front of the patient for the mandibular you are standing in front of the patient okay for the maxillary one more very important thing is you will see that the patient's maxilla is in line with the operator's elbow your chair should be so high or so low so that the patient's maxilla coincides with the operator's elbow and for the mandibular the patient's maxilla should coincide with the operator's shoulder this will ensure that you don't have to bend uh, excessively or uh, you are not able to see in the patient's mouth the patient is too high all these things will not happen so again for the maxillary patient's maxilla operator's elbow for the mandibular patient's maxilla operator's shoulder maxillary behind the patient 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock position mandibular in front of the patient okay instruments i'll not go in detail uh, regarding the instruments we all know what instruments are supposed to be used now the first thing is you check the custom trays in the patient's mouth hopefully all of you would have done this before the examination ensure that there is proper 2 mm of space all around including in the frenum region okay i'm again uh, emphasizing including in the frenum region i'll just hopefully these videos play so the operator if you will see is behind the patient fly slowly retract don't hurt the patient once you have placed retract nicely and then check whether there is sufficient space here the space for the frenum is deficient you need 2 mm of space for the green stick material all around including in the frenum region okay so that is very important check in all the frenae region in all the vestibular region whether 2 mm of space is there except in the pps posteriorly your uh, tray should extend right up to the posterior vibrating line okay so here you you will see the notch made for the uh, frenum it is not made with a straight burr because that tends to make it very narrow we are using a regular carbide burr which is slightly broader okay and after trimming please ensure that the buckle and the uh, inner borders are nicely rounded as you can see in this video please ensure that that is very important once you are happy with the borders all around you have to check whether posteriorly it is extending correctly at the posterior vibrating line so the posterior part of your tray should stop at the posterior vibrating line for that you have to know where the posterior vibrating line is mm -hmm. so i hope all of you know about this uh, particular uh, instrument this is a t burnisher it has a round end and a flat end keep the round end towards the palate keep it on the ridge and then just go posteriorly till it falls in the handler notch i will not tell you where the posterior vibrating line is i hope all of you know so it has to fall in the handler notch once you have checked that on both the sides wait i am now asking the patient to say ah when the patient says ah when i start the video you will see the palate this is the soft palate this part of the palate going up okay and the point from where it starts going up is the point where your posterior vibrating line is okay i hope you can see this in the video yes again we are asking the patient to say ah and you will see the palate going up you will see some shadow over here i'll just point out where the posterior vibrating line is this is going up see and it starts going up from the point over here so this is where our posterior vibrating line 
lies. Okay. So once we know where our hamular notches are and where our posterior vibrating line is, we take a marker, we nicely wipe off the palette, dip the marker in spirit and mark this line. Okay. It is very important that our tray is extending right up to this line, not shorter, not more than that. Otherwise our border molding would not be correct. It is very important. I am again telling you again and again. So this is a mistake which most of us make. Most of the times it is quite overextended. Don't keep it overextended. Okay. So you mark, you connect all these three points. And then what we do is we transfer it on our custom tray. We place the custom tray in the patient's mouth and we transfer it. And then we check whether our posterior most extension is correct or not. Okay. Sometimes when we transfer it, we are not able to see it on the custom tray correctly. So we are not able to judge correctly. For that, what we do is we mark on the custom tray itself directly. Okay. We mark on the custom trays itself directly. And then we place the tray in the patient's mouth. So this is a reverse way of checking whether our tray extension is correct or not. When we do this, we are going to get a very nice clear marking on the palate of the patient. Then ask the patient to say ah and you will see whether our posterior vibrating line extension is correct or not. Okay. You can just ask the patient to look down at around 30 degrees so that the palate falls down. The moment the palate falls down, it will come in contact with the tray and you will get a beautiful marking. Okay. You can see over here. And ask the patient to say, I ah, and check whether this is correct or not. Right? Once you are happy with all the extensions, we are wanting to do border molding. I'll just show you very quickly how we want you to heat the green stick material. Okay? The green stick material is not supposed to be held on the flame for a long time. Don't just hold it on top of the flame till it starts burning. Don't do that. We are supposed to continuously keep on moving the green stick material through the flame continuously. Second point, don't just hit uh, heat at the tip. Don't just heat only one millimeter at the tip and then add very little on the custom tray. Don't do that. Heat at least around, I don't know, a centimeter or maybe more than that so that you can adapt it in the anterior region nicely. You know that you have that much material and you can mold it nicely in the patient's mouth. Okay. So again, two points, don't keep it on the flame and just hold it like that. Keep on moving it through the flame and don't heat only the tip. Ensure that you are heating maybe more than a centimeter so that you can place it, uh, let's say from the buccal frenum to the buccal frenum, then from the buccal frenum to the posterior region. This is what you need to do. Okay. Second most important point is before you place it in the patient's mouth, please temper put it in warm water. The temperature of the warm water should be around 110 degrees Fahrenheit or somewhere around 45 degrees Celsius. Don't put dry heated uh, green stick in the patient's mouth. You are going to burn the patient. Please temper. The second advantage of tempering the material is that the heat uh, dissipates evenly and you can mold it much better. Once you place it in the patient's mouth, just push the material and start the molding. We know what the molding steps are for the label freedom. We tend to pull the lip outside, uh, upward, outside and down. For the label freedom, we don't do any side to side movements because there are no muscle attachments in the label freedom. So again, I'm telling you for the label freedom, up, out, down. That is it. Okay. Then we take some uh, material, add on the buckle. For the buckle freedom, what we do is we ask the, uh, we just take the cheek up, out, down and then we do a little anterior and posterior movement okay that anterior and posterior movement is done because there are muscle attachments in the buccal frenum right you can see this anterior part being molded nicely then for the buccal frenum so the videos are not playing correctly there's some issue with the internet so as i said up out down and then anteriorly and posteriorly. Up, out, down, anteriorly and posteriorly. Don't forget that. And then the, the part posterior to the buccal freedom or the buccal vestibule is called as the coronomaxillary space. Okay. 
एकदम पोस्टीरियर विच इज बक्कल टू दी मैक्सिलरी ट्यूब्रोसिटी इट इज अफेक्टेड बाय दी कोरोनाइड प्रोसेस ऑफ द मैंडेबल सो फॉर दैट वॉट वी डू इज वी प्लेस द ट्रेन द पेशेंट नॉट विद सॉफ्ट मटीरियल आज द पेशेंट टू क्लोज द मैंडेबल लिटल एंड देन टू साइड टू साइड मूवमेंट ओके द मैंडेबल इज सपोज टू मूव साइड टू साइड सो जस्ट आज द पेशेंट टू क्लोज अ लिटल एंड देन टू साइड टू साइड मूवमेंट I hope all of you will remember this. Again, very important. Temper the compound in water bath. It will distribute the heat in the compound. It will not hurt the patient, and it will ensure that the uh, material is more moldable. And the temperature should be somewhere around 45 degrees Celsius or 110 degrees Fahrenheit. When we do water molding, once we remove, we might see some material flowing inside on the wax. Ensure that you cut all this material, reheat, and remold. There should be no material on the wax. Ensure that. Okay. I hope this plays. This is also again very important. Now, in the posterior palatal seal region, we are supposed to add according to the cupid bow shape. Okay. Don't forget that we are supposed to add only according to cupid bow shape. And second most important is don't add anything beyond the tray. For the posterior palatal seal area, the material has to be added on the tray. You have cut back the wax spacer. There is some space on the tray. The material has to be added only on that space, and in cupid bow shape. Why is it cupid bow shape? I'll show you in the next uh, slide. But again, very important. Nothing beyond the tray or the posterior palatal seal. It has to be on the tray, not on the wax, not beyond the tray, on the tray. Because we have trimmed our tray till the posterior vibrating line. Our material should also be till that. Part of the tray only should not go beyond. Okay. And one more thing is when you are recording this posterior palatal seal area, you place it in the patient's mouth. Once you place it in the patient's mouth, don't ask the patient to say ah. When the patient says ah, the palate goes up. The material is over here. The palate goes up. It will not come in contact with the material. Instead of asking the patient to say ah, just ask the patient to look down by around 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, at an angle of 30 degrees not celsius at an angle of 30 degrees that would ensure that the palate is falling on the material and it would record the posterior palatal seal much better so don't ask the patient to say ah just ask the patient to look down 30 degrees okay ah here you can see in this image here this is the posterior nasal spine because of this posterior nasal spine the anterior vibrating line is in a cupid shape uh, cupid bow shape as you can see over here cupid bow that is why the material should always be in a cupid bow shape posterior palatal seal very important question in theory also i'll just quickly tell you what are the functions it is asking why also most important retention because it provides seal atmospheric pressure second is it determines the posterior most extent of the denture compensates for polymerization shrinkage no time to explain you now maybe in the question answers if you have doubts it prevents gag reflex and prevents accumulation of This is the completed water molding maxillary. Then, when you start with the, if suppose you are supposed to do the mandibular water molding in the exam, try and start with the lingual side. Okay, first finish the lingual and then do the buccal. And in the lingual, the most important aspect is this S shape, which you can see. Okay, this S shape is because there is a premyelohyoid fossa. So when you do the tongue movements, the tongue pushes the material in the premyelohyoid fossa. So in this region, the material is pushed. Inside towards the mandible in the premyelohyoid fossa. Then, as you come behind, there is the mylohyoid ridge. So the tongue cannot push the material inside. The mylohyoid ridge pushes the material outside. And then again, there is the retromyelohyoid fossa. So the tongue will again push the material inside. It is very simple. Therefore, the anterior third, middle third, posterior third, we get a nice S shape. Okay, very simple to understand. Asked most commonly in the examinations. Once your lingual is done. I'll just show you what are the tongue movements if the video plays. So the videos are not playing clearly today. Ah, ask the patient to protrude the tongue. Right, left, cheek, the anterior part of the tray, just the handle, maybe the upper lip and the posterior part of the palate. Okay, so outside, right, left, the handle, the upper lip, the posterior part of the palate. Each movement will mold a part of the uh, border molding material, which you just read in the books. Okay. Then you go with the anterior molding. Again, it is similar to the maxillary. One more important feature over here is the masseteric notch. 
masseteric noise is formed by the action of the vaccinator muscle it pushes on the mas uh, masseter muscle so what we do is when we are placing the mandibular tray we place the tray in the patient's mouth we have heated this part that is the distobuccal part we place it in the patient's mouth we ask the patient to close and then we don't allow the patient to close we put a lot of pressure on the mandible so the patient is closing against the pressure so what happens is the masseter muscle gets activated because the masseter muscle gets activated it pushes on the vaccinator muscle and then we get this masseteric notch over here okay so what are the common mistakes which we do in border molding quickly we'll go through this material keeps coming off the tray this is mainly because we don't dry the tray before we add the low fusing compound so always before we add the low fusing compound please dry the tray then add low fusing compound if you are adding on top of the low fusing compound another layer please dry the previous layer and then add again but dry for the posterior palatal seal as i said the material is added posterior to the tray don't do that it should be on the tray border molding is short posteriorly in the mandibular especially in the limbal region this is because the primary impressions are short we have not gone beyond the myeloid ridge we have to go beyond the myeloid ridge below the myeloid ridge and up to the retromolar pad both of uh, those areas have to be recorded so that our custom tray can be extended because otherwise in the exam most of the students tend to make short lingual borders the material is burned again keep on moving the green stick various sections are not merged sufficiently so once you have done two different sections take some uh, uh, chip syringe heat both those sections temper place in the patient's mouth and mold again just to look like one nice clear smooth border molding excess low fusing compound has to be cut and removed as i said and material is not molded properly many times because you don't heat the material sufficiently or you are afraid to mold don't do that ensure that you have heated the material sufficiently tempered it nicely place it in the patient's mouth and then do nice movements don't be afraid of hurting the patient don't hurt the patient but do some nice movements after that of course we'll remove the spacer don't forget then we'll make holes holes are usually made from the incisive papilla in the midline one fourth inch away from each other so one two three four if the rugae are very prominent we might make a few on the side also five and six okay and then we go ahead with making of the impression i will not play this video you all know how to mix and load and make the impression again there are some mistakes that we make during the impression ah this is important if we have to do a maxillary border molding and impression once your impression is done ensure that you mark the posterior vibrating line in the patient's mouth again and transfer it on the impression and only then submit it to the uh, examiner till then don't do that mandibular ha ah. common mistakes in final impression will quickly go through it porosity in the palatal region this is very common and i'll tell you this is because you have not adapted your spacer properly on the cast sometimes the patient has a deep palate when you are adapting the spacer the spacer does not completely touch the palate you have not heated the spacer properly and pressed it on the palate when the, you do that there is already space between the palate and the spacer on top of which you make the custom tray so ideally where there was supposed to be 1 mm space there is already 3 mm or 4 mm of space whatever material you are using is not going to fill that much area that is why you get porosity you remove you take a lot of material you again load you again get porosity this is a problem with your fabrication of the custom tray so ensure that you have properly adapted the spacer and the custom tray to the palate okay there are streaks so we have to mix nicely ensure that it is properly mixed so that there are no streaks it has to be even the material sets too quickly there are two reasons for this one while loading your tray is wet okay you have washed your tray you have removed the spacer you have made holes and you have washed your tray then you don't dry your tray and don't forget zinc oxide ethanol sets faster in the presence of water okay so ensure that your tray is completely dried before you are loading the tray second you are taking a lot of material the more material you take the more time you have to mix the more time you have to mix it sets much quickly so be careful with that don't take a lot of material it is not required borders are not covered so that when you are loading ensure that you cover all the green stick material with your impression material and then place it in the patient's mouth the borders have to be covered and tissue stops are not exposed because maybe you have not applied pressure evenly and sufficiently so first when you place it in the patient's mouth in the area of the tissue stops two fingers like this press count till 10 in your mind 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 then hold the tray and then start with the molding 
and continuously keep on molding till the final impression material sets okay and once everything is done don't forget to put it in disinfectants for zinc oxide fusion all most commonly used disinfectant is glutaraldehyde so the impression once it is made it has to be placed in a disinfectant your college would obviously have made disinfectant and it should be in that for 10 minutes and then it should be submitted to 